Good afternoon, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 6th, 2020, and it's time for our daily devotion. Thank you for being a part of it. Today we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 30 through 33. Before we do, as folks join us, I'm just going to share a little bit of information. This is really primarily for Doolin's Grove folks, although there's some details in here that might pertain to you if you're outside of our church membership. Um, first, uh, very briefly, the board met yesterday evening to discuss uh, how and when we might start coming back together in person, and the board has decided to take a conservative approach and hold off on any kind of in-person gatherings until the beginning of June. So for right now, we're going to continue what we're doing, meeting virtually on Facebook Live and hopefully with some more Zoom meetings until June. And we'll be communicating more about what those uh, gatherings might look like once we get into June. But if nothing changes, we are planning some, some limited and careful ways of coming back together in person beginning in June. Uh, but just keep, keep tuned in for more details about that. Uh, this Sunday is Mother's Day. Just a reminder, it's a, an opportunity for us to honor our mothers in a special way, even though obviously we are called to honor our mothers and fathers all the time. And I want to encourage you to be thinking about your mothers and thanking God for how he has blessed you through them and where possible, uh, be, be looking forward to getting in touch with them this Sunday in some, some way, uh, expressing your love and gratitude to your moms. Uh, Another note, on May 14th, which is coming up quickly, we will complete 2 Corinthians if everything goes according to plan. We've got it scheduled out, and um, we'll be done with the book of 2 Corinthians May 14th, which is crazy. Usually it takes like six years for us to work through a book, and here it's only been a, a little over a month. Uh, after we complete 2 Corinthians, I'm going to scale back these daily devotions. Instead of being Monday through Friday, we're going to start having them Tuesday through Thursday. So that's three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, that we'll have these after May 14th, after we finish 2 Corinthians. And that's so that I can start to uh, give some of that attention toward preparing for these gatherings in person and also uh, trying to do more Zoom gatherings. Um, so uh, that's not changing immediately, but once we finish 2 Corinthians on May 14th, we're going to scale back these daily devotions to three days a week and continuing our Sunday morning live streams as well. Uh, Sunday, May 17th will be a special Sunday for us because we're going to recognize our graduates uh, and we have a, a handful to recognize and it's a bizarre graduation year for them being unable to participate in the usual graduation ceremonies but we want to recognize them and celebrate with them and so we're going to do that Sunday, May 17th. Uh, also on that Sunday, we're going to begin a new book study of the book of Matthew. We're just really going to introduce it. Uh, we'll be in Matthew for the rest of May, and, uh, and then we'll go back to our summer book, which is Isaiah. At least that's my plan as of right now. So that gives you a little bit of a heads up what's coming down the line. And uh, if you've joined us after I started talking, you might want to go back and watch the beginning of the video again to, to catch any announcements you might have missed. But we're going to dive right in, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 30 through 33. And the, the big idea is, don't fall for foolish boasting. And I'll explain what I mean as we get into it, but let's pray first. Father, thank you for your guidance for us as a church in the midst of the pandemic. And we look to you for continued guidance. And right now, we pray that you would speak to us through your word and that we would be transformed by the renewal of our minds and better able to trust and follow Jesus together. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. All right. Hello, everybody who has joined us here. Um, Going to go ahead and get started. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 30 through 33. Don't fall for foolish boasting. Let's read the whole passage, and then we'll step through it together one ver verse at a time. Paul writes, if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. At Damascus, the governor under King Aretas has guarded the city of Damascus in, in order to seize me, 
but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. Okay, so keep in mind as we jump into this paragraph, you, all you guys with us here right now, I think have been with us for the weeks we've been in 2 Corinthians. So you know this comes in a section where Paul is speaking like a fool. That's how he's introduced this whole section back in 1117. He says, what I'm saying with this boastful confidence, I say not as the Lord would, but as a fool. So he's kind of mimicking the way the Corinthians were talking about these false apostles who they thought were so great. And he's kind of playing their game, using their, their way of speaking and um, boasting. And so first he boasted in his strength. And Ron talked to us about that yesterday. He talked about his lineage as a Hebrew, as a Jew. And he talked about the rigors of his service as a Christian. And so he's kind of beating them at their own game first off. So if we, if we want to boast about our service to Christ and to God, then here's what I would say if I were to boast like that. Now he's going to shift his tone and start to boast about his weakness. And he's going to be talking about weakness all the way through tomorrow's passage, which will end with chapter 12, verse 10. But you can kind of see his strategy, he's sort of shaking them back and forth. He, first he talks about his strength, and now he's going to talk about his weakness, and he's trying to shake loose their grip on these false super apostles who seem to be so awesome and have captivated the Corinthians. So verse 30, If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. And then he goes into this oath, a very formal and high-minded oath, appealing to God and saying, basically, as God is my witness, what I'm about to tell you is 100% true. He says in verse 31, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. So with this setup, under normal circumstances, you would expect someone to then tell you something amazing that they've experienced or done. If someone came up to you and said, I'm about to tell you something very important, and as God is my witness, I am not lying, you would expect them to tell you something pretty awesome. But Paul, I think he's setting it up this way to be ironic. I think he's trying to uh, give a little bit of a parody of the way the Corinthians were thinking. So he sets up this with this grand oath, and then uh, sort of the punchline in verses 32 and 33. It says, At Damascus, the governor under King Aretas, I meant to look that up how to pronounce it, and I forgot. Sorry about that. Uh, the governor under this king was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. With the setup in verse 31, you might have thought he was going to tell them of some daring, um, heroic action that he that he gave in Damascus. But instead, he looks silly. He looks foolish, uh, pointing to the fact that I hid in a basket. It might have been like a fish basket or something. I, I huddled down in a basket and had people lower me out of a window so that I could run for my life. He is not here putting himself out there to look awesome. He's putting himself out there to look humble and meek. He's pointing to one of uh, what the world might look at as a failure. And he's trying to almost be a needle to their balloon here and just deflate the whole cultural sense of um, promoting that which seems humanly awesome. So he's beat them at their own game in the passage before saying, I, in many ways, am even stronger than these false apostles. But now he's saying, but I don't even care about that. I don't even want you to see me as strong and awesome. Here's an example of a time that I was anything but strong and awesome. Here's an example of a time that I, I cowered and ran from danger in order to survive. The big idea for them and for us, as Christians, we are free from the worldly values that enslave us to trying to glorify ourselves. We don't see worldly strength and status as the epitome of what it means to be good. This is the value system that was making them fall into the trap of listening to these false apostles who seemed 
strong and seem to have high status. That's not the way we think as Christians. We are free from that to embrace the kingdom values of sacrifice and service that Paul embodied. We're free from glorifying ourselves and following those who glorify themselves to instead glorify Jesus Christ and follow those who glorify Jesus Christ. We don't think the way the world thinks about these things. Uh, so this has a lot of, of implications for us, and I'll leave it to you to work out the specific implications for yourself, but I'll just list a couple. Take social media, for example. Christians ought to be different on social media than non-Christians because we are free from the desire to glorify ourselves. Uh, the, the painstaking efforts many will go through to cultivate a brand and an image on social media is ridiculous. And Christians, we, we just don't need to waste our time with any of that. It doesn't matter if people think that we're beautiful. It doesn't matter if people think that we're cool. It doesn't matter if people think that we live a glamorous lifestyle. Uh, that's, it's not our goal to cultivate an image. Uh, another area of implication for this will be for you perfectionists out there. Some of you are perfectionists, and part of the reason why, if you're honest, is pride, because you don't want anyone to catch you having made a mistake. You're free from that in Christ. It's okay if you make a mistake. It's okay if people see you make a mistake, because it's not about you being awesome. It's about Jesus being awesome. Uh, associated with that, another implication for this is for um, those who have a fear of embarrassment. And I would put myself in this category. Ever since I was a little kid, I have hated to be embarrassed. I hate to look stupid in front of other people. Uh, I've told my church family here this story a lot, but my Aunt Beth loves the story of when I was a kid and she had me and my cousins helping her put together a mailing. I think it was camp registration forms. I don't remember. Some kind of uh, illegal child labor that she was doing. And everybody had their own job. And my job was to lick all the envelopes. That was all the instructions I had been given. Lick all the envelopes. So I tried to do my best and lick all the envelopes. Uh, what she left out of the instructions was lick all the envelopes and seal them. So when she came back into the room, there were all these envelopes all over the floor that had been licked but not sealed. And oh, she laughed and laughed and laughed. And uh, I don't remember how old I was. I was a little kid. But man, that hurt my feelings. That, and that's just an example of... Uh, the fear of embarrassment that is part of my DNA, I think that Jesus is freeing me from that over time. But some of you may be like me in that. It's okay to look foolish. It's okay to not look smart. It's okay to not look strong. It's okay to make a mistake because it's not about us looking awesome. It's about Jesus being awesome. It's not about glorifying ourselves. It's about glorifying him. That's what Paul is trying to shake them out of their stupor here and say, why are you embracing these false apostles? Why do you even care that they look strong and like they have a great status? It doesn't matter. Now, more to the point of the actual passage here, uh, this has implications for how we look at ministers. Uh, we don't evaluate ministers based on how strong they look and what status they seem to have. Uh, we base our evaluation on ministers based on their servitude and their sacrifice. That's what Paul is imparting to them. And when we think about our own ministries, uh, we, we don't need to waste our time trying to minister in such a way that makes us seem strong and brilliant or anything like that. We need to give ourselves to ministering in a way that is uh, genuine service to people and is self-sacrificially loving to people. That's what Paul is trying to say here. So there's going to be a much more on this topic tomorrow as we get into the, the next passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. But in the meantime, I'll leave you with two questions for some reflection here. Um, the first, am I falling for foolish boasting? Am I, like the Corinthians, falling for foolish boasting? Am I believing the imagery that I see on social media? Am I believing these people who have carefully crafted Instagram pictures that their lives really are that glamorous? Uh, am I a slave to perfectionism? 
Am I terrified of embarrassing myself? Am I expending a great deal of energy trying to keep up a, an image of who I am before others? Am I trying to show my strength? Am I trying to show my status? Uh, am I ashamed of my weakness and do I try to hide my weakness? In other words, am I trying to glorify myself? So that's one question to consider. All those questions are really extensions of that same one question. Second question, am I embracing humility? Am I embracing service as a way of life? Am I embracing self-sacrifice as a way of loving people? In other words, am I glorifying God by ministering to others? Those are the two paths before us in today's passage and in, as well as yesterday's and as well as tomorrow's in, a, in another section of Scripture. And it's something I think it would be beneficial for us to consider. I hope that as you and I continue to trust and follow Jesus together and we continue to depend on the Holy Spirit to empower us to live the Christian life, as we continue to let God's Word guide our daily practical living as we continue to try to have a gospel influence, that we will be increasingly free from glorifying ourselves to glorify God instead. So that's today's devotion. Thank you for being here with us. I'll scroll through the comments, see if there's anything I need to reply to. And if you have anything you'd like to ask or add, feel free to toss it out there in the comments. Uh, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning and say hello to Ron and Martha. Good to see you guys. Wendy from New Zealand. Hello. Good morning. Lynn Jones Carpenter is watching. It says for you, Lynn, that I have an option to bring you on camera. I don't know if I should try that or not. I haven't noticed that before. You tell me if you want me to try to bring you on camera or not. Uh, hello. Dawn is watching. Doug. Good to see you. Doris and Kathy. Becky Doolin. Hello. Um... Bill Milliner is watching. He's going to be doing... Oh, I have an option to bring Bill Milliner on camera, too. I really kind of want to try that. I don't know what that means. Uh, Doris Lowry says, Randy and Jen really love uh, my Aunt Beth. She was their counselor at camp. Yes, my Aunt Beth has impacted a lot of people through camp ministry. Uh, camp ministry is something near and dear, dear to uh, Bill Milliner's heart, too. Uh, that's okay getting in late, Bill. A lot of people come in late. Um, all right. Well, that looks good for today. Thank you very much for being a part of this. I love you all very much. And uh, if you got in late, if you're a Doolin's Grover, you might want to rewatch the first part because I shared a couple of announcements that might be of interest to you. But I'll be back with you at three o'clock tomorrow and look forward to seeing you then.